Many skeptics, and especially Jesus mythers, say that Jesus was a copy of the Hindu god Krishna. If you know Jesus' story, you'll start to see some similarities. Krishna was born of a virgin on December 25th. His birth was attended by angels and announced by a star in the east. He was visited by shepherds and presented with spices. His earthly father was a carpenter. He was persecuted as an infant by a tyrant who killed many other infants. He taught through parables. He had a beloved disciple named Arjuna, which translates as John. He argued with religious leaders and called them heretics. He performed many miracles. His moralistic teachings were the same as Jesus, and they were given much earlier. He is depicted with his foot on the head of a serpent. He was crucified on a tree between two thieves. He was killed at the age of 30. He was resurrected from the dead and ascended into heaven. He was called the Shepherd God, Redeemer, Firstborn, Sin-Bearer, Liberator, and Universal Word. He was called the Son of God and Lord and Savior. He was called the Lion of the tribe of Saki and was the second person of the Hindu Trimurti. His disciples gave him the title of Jezios. He will return at the end of days on a white horse and will vanquish an evil prince. There are a lot of similarities here, and this is a big problem for Christians. Or it would be a problem for Christians if most of it wasn't false. Krishna was born of Devaki, but she wasn't a virgin. Krishna was the eighth child born to Devaki and Vasudeva, though it is said that he was conceived without intercourse. He wasn't born on December 25th, but rather on the eighth day of the dark fortnight in the month of Bhadrapada, which corresponds to July or August on the Gregorian calendar. His birth was actually celebrated by spiritual beings, but the burden of proof is on the Jesus mythers to show the link between this and Jesus' birth. There is no indication of a specific star in the east that pointed to Krishna's birth. There is no evidence of spices being presented, but instead flowers rain down from heaven. There is also no evidence of shepherds attending to Krishna. Vasudeva brought Krishna to a village of wealthy cow herds called Gokula, and left Krishna with the man Nanda and his wife Yasoda. There was a tyrant looking to kill Krishna specifically, because there was a prophecy that Devaki's eighth child would kill Kamsa, the tyrant. This is similar to the story of Herod, who wanted to kill Jesus because of a prophecy. But again, the burden of proof lies on the Jesus mythers to show the connection. Krishna was a teacher, but he didn't teach through parables. The Bhagavad Gita is a dialogue of instruction between Krishna and Arjuna, his disciple. There is no link between the name Arjuna and John. The English name John comes from the Hebrew Yohanan, meaning Yahweh is gracious, and has no Indian root. Krishna did clash with religious leaders, specifically the Brahmanas, and they were humbled. Krishna was said to perform miracles, but so are all deity figures, so this is way too broad to make any kind of significant connection. Many critics try to draw parallels between Krishna's teachings and Jesus' teachings. Here are a few examples. The Christian teaching of reaping what you sow is said to be related to karma, but karma implies reincarnation, which Christianity rejects. Apparently, the concept of the soul being distinct from the body is a Hindu idea, not a Jewish one. Never mind the story of Adam's spirit literally being breathed into his body in Genesis. Hindu Brahmins are said to be twice born, which prefigures the Christian idea of being born again. However, the second birth in the Brahmin class is a spiritual one in which the Brahmin boy completes a ritual and is then prepared to go to religious school. This is a normal rite of passage, not a conversion as it is in Christianity. The idea of Jesus being God in the flesh apparently came from Hindu concepts like with Krishna's incarnation. However, this is not exclusive to Hinduism. Many religions have this idea and there is no reason to assume copying from one religion to another. Simply reading Krishna's teachings show how they actually differ from Jesus. Krishna preached reincarnation. He said he was the personification of death. He said that worshipping other gods is the same as worshipping him, just done incorrectly. Devotees can reach Krishna through good works. Krishna fought the serpent Kaliya by dancing on his many heads. After they were all subdued, the serpent recognized Krishna as God. This is nothing like the depictions of Jesus stepping on the snake. Jesus is depicted crushing the serpent, which is Satan, in a final act of vanquishing evil. 
Krishna merely subdues a particular snake beast. Krishna was not crucified. He was shot by an arrow from the hunter Jara. He did not have a bodily resurrection, but simply returned to his heavenly abode in the body he already had. He also lived to be over a hundred. Some sources say 112, some sources say 125. Krishna was not called a shepherd god, but instead a cowherd god. He could be considered the redeemer, firstborn, sin-bearer, liberator, and universal word. However, links between these titles and Jesus need to be shown. One frequently encounters scholars who first use Christian terminology to describe pagan beliefs and practices, and then marvel at the striking parallels they think they have discovered. One can go a long way toward proving early Christian dependence on the mysteries by describing some mystery belief or practice in Christian terminology. Exaggerations and oversimplifications abound in this kind of literature. One encounters overblown claims about alleged likenesses between baptism and the Lord's Supper, and similar sacraments in certain mystery cults. The mere fact that Christianity has a sacred meal and a washing of the body is supposed to prove that it borrowed these ceremonies from similar meals and washings in the pagan cults. By themselves, of course, such outward similarities prove nothing. After all, religious ceremonies can only assume a limited number of forms, and they will naturally relate to important or common aspects of human life. The more important question is the meaning of the pagan practices. He was not called Son of God or Lord or Savior, and did not come to earth to die for man's salvation. His main reason to come to earth was to kill the tyrant Kamsa. He was never called the Lion of Saki, and the Hindu Trimurti is not a trinity but a triad of gods. His disciples never gave him the title Jesus, and it has no connection to the English transliteration Jesus anyway. Krishna is not the one to return at the end of days on a white horse, but Kalki, a future incarnation of Vishnu. He will kill all demons in the future. This is only similar to Jesus if you take a specific view on end times theology in Christianity, but that's not necessary. This would be the pre-millennial view. There are multiple other views, and showing a link between any of them and Hinduism would be very difficult. After looking at the evidence behind these claims, it's clear that there is no real link between the accounts of Krishna and Jesus. Therefore, it's clear Jesus is not a copy of Krishna.